Good morning to all of you. Welcome to Legal Matters by Sai Bob Sankara. In this video, we are going to discuss another theory in the jurisprudence. This is pure theory of law. Pure means without any <coughs> impurities. Malinamun lekunda. Law should be pure. Law should not be influenced by any extraneous political, sociological, or legal circumstances. That is what is said by Hans Kelsen. So that's why it's called Hans Kelsen's Pure Theory of Law or Pure Theory of Law or it is otherwise called as Normative Theory. Norms. So norms means the procedure. Norms means so step by step procedure is called Normative Theory. First norm, second norm, third norm like that. And there will be a Grun norm that is the fundamental norm or that is the basic norm. So his theory is called as a, otherwise called as a pyramid theory. Ultimately, you can call it as a pure theory of law. So Hans Kelsen is not an ordinary man. He is a professor in Vienna University. He was an Austrian man. He has written the conscience of Austria also. So he is a renowned Austrian lawyer and he is a philosophical, he is a philosopher actually. And he proposed the concept of a pure theory of law, right? So his argument states that when natural law has actually, it contains the set of politics, then sociology or other factors, then it is polluted. It should not be polluted, it should be free from all these things, it should be pure. So if the political influence is there, there is no need to uh, propose the law, better to avoid it. So, please, uh, like uh, morals, uh, the proposals like morals, uh, sociology, and uh, they should not be interfered. Of course, his uh, theory has come up in the year 1881, right? So, law should be pure. That means it should be free of any extra legal influences of any type. Maybe sociology, maybe philosophy, maybe politics, maybe ethics, and so on and so forth. So, should be only pure theory as it is existing. So, please remember, it strives to, he wanted to strive, he strived for excluding anything that is not precisely law. That means law should be pure. Then now, law as a normative science. So, norms, norms are the rules for anything. Suppose if you wanted to do, suppose if I wanted to give you a lecture, the first norm I have to make is I have to study, I have to prepare notes, I have to be, so I must be mentally prepared. Then only I can give you the lecture. Otherwise, it's very difficult for me. What happens otherwise, just like your seminar, coming, then reading something and going away. Is it the basis? No. So the norm says, so please remember, in this norms, Guru norm, it is the basic norm, it is the fundamental norm, it is more important. So actually, this Guru norm is a German term. It means the fundamental norm. So the Guru norm establishes the content and the next norms will be followed. They have to be followed. They are called additional norms. So please remember, Grinna is the beginning point for any system, for any legal system, for any law. So please remember, the hierarchy of norms, one by one, they should be accepted in sequence. They should be accepted in sequence. If you see this photo, I think you will be, be able to appreciate it. So this is the Grinna. That means when any case occurs, when any incident happens, so some FIR has to be registered. This is the grim norm. So that means some murder has taken place. Then the normative theory, what has to, the police have to register a case. After registering a case, what they have to do? They have to visit the scene of offense. They have to examine the witnesses. They have to make out a case. Then they have to arrest the accused. So this is, that means investigation is the second norm. Then, Simply after conducting investigation, they cannot punish him. They have to produce him before the court. That means the third norm is <coughs> they have to file the charge sheet or they have to file the final report. So every investigation may not be 
successful. Sometimes there may be some failures also you have to accept. So presently, as per section 173 CRPC, 173 CRPC, the final report has to be submitted. So since it's a murder case, let us think that the accused has been arrested. Then what they have to do? They have to find the charge sheet. That is the third norm. After the filing the charge sheet, now the fourth norm comes. So now the ball is in the court. So the court has to conduct the trial. How they conduct the trial? First of all, according to section 207 CRPC, they will supply copies of the documents on which they rely to the accused. Then they will examine the accused person. They will question him literally. If he agrees, they will punish him there itself. But of course, normally they will not agree. They will say no. So therefore, they have to examine, the court has to examine the witnesses. So normally, the procedure is, they will examine the uh, so-called prosecution witnesses, later the defense witnesses, then they will hear the arguments and they have to decide the case. <clears throat> maybe conviction or maybe acquittal. So, if any person is aggrieved, so next step is conviction or acquittal. Then, if any person is aggrieved by the decision of the court, because nobody is perfect in this world, so they can go for appeal. Appeal is the last term. What is appeal? Appeal is nothing but a petition to the higher court that the lower court has not considered your case. The lower court has not at all taken into consideration your arguments. The lower court has not at all looked into the merits of your case. It, uh, there is a manifest error on the part of uh, the lower court judgment. Then you can go for appeal. So this is step by step. <clears throat> this should be followed. This is what is called pure theory of law. But do you mean to say that things are going on like this? Everywhere the interferences are there. Suppose when the police file the charge sheet, if the person, the government in power, they wanted to help the accused person, so they can say, they can claim discharge, they can file discharge petition under section 321 CRPC that they are not going to file any charge sheet or they don't want to file any case. They don't want to pursue the case against uh, the so-called person. 321 CRPC, yes, political power, politics, they will use the law under section 321 CRPC. Right. So in this murder case or whatever case it is, this man is convicted for 10 years. Then under section 432 CRPC, the government has got the power to commute the sentence. From 10 years they can do, make 2 years. Right? Then if it is not there, he is convicted, his appeal is not also allowed, then he can go to the president or the governor for pardoning. Yes, the, gov the governor or the president of India can pardon them. Suppose the court convicts him for two years or three years and he is a young man, maybe aged about 21 years or so. The court itself can apply the so-called Probation of Offenders Act or plea back again. So many things are there. These are all the hurdles. These should not be there according to Hans Kelsen. Law should be pure. No extraneous influences. So do you understand? how the other forces will come, how the legal forces will come, how the political forces will come, how the sociological thinking will come, like Probation of Appetite Act. So, all these things should not be there. Law should be pure. So, this is theory. Of course, whether you follow it or not, it is a different thing. But it is a legal philosopher. Now, we are discussing the a few case laws on this uh, le, <coughs> pure theory. First one is very famous case. Keshwananda Bharati, His Holiness Sadhguru, Keshwananda Bharati versus State of Kerala, 1973, where the Honorable Supreme Court of India, 13 judges bench, they said that whatever amendments you make, the basic structure should not be changed. So, that is the current norm. Second case, Indira Gandhi versus Rajana Rain, 1975. The government, the union, they have amended 39th Amendment or uh, 39th Amendment. So they have amended Article 329 and brought 329A. So emergency time. It's not correct. So the basic structure, the power of amending is outside the <coughs> court, per the of the court. In Minerva Mills also, Minerva Mills versus in India, 1980, 
so basic structure includes the limited ability of the parliament to modify the constitution as well as maintaining harmony between the fundamental rights and the directive principles of the state policy i think time is over with this i am concluding so this is an important theory please remember so hans kelsen's pure theory of law with this we have completed the laws so far we have studied the schools of thought then now we have completed the theories so with this your foundation has uh, come to uh, i think it's a big small very good foundation uh, from this time onwards it is very easy happily you can proceed with the jurisprudence okay then we are going to study the concepts the rules who is owner who is, what is the possession possessionship position what are rules primary rules second rules what how to interpret the matters all these things uh, step by step we are going to discuss with this i am stopping thank you very much